Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problem solving questions. It has 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 288. Please turn to it. Page number 288, the very first problem that you see there in the second column, number 145 problem is already on the blackboard. We are told that we have a quadrilateral RSTU. As you can see here, RSTU, we are given a quadrilateral. Some of the basic things that they tell, that they tell us is are bloody obvious. We are told that R to U is parallel, R to U is parallel to S to T. We are told that RU is longer than T, S, T. This, as I said, these are, these are bloody obvious. The question simply is, what's the area of this, what's the area of this quadrilateral? Let's see what else they tell us in the, in the, in the picture itself. They tell us that the vertical distance that you see there, the, the perpendicular that is dropped from S to W, we are told that it is 60. We also know that uh, this distance is 15, and S to T we are told is 45. Let's see what they tell us in the first statement, shall we? In the first statement they tell us that R to U is 80. R to U is 80. So we're going to change our color so that we can make the insertion here the additions that we're making in the picture in addition to what is actually given to us. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop our perpendicular here and let's give this point a name here. Uh, what should we call it? Let's call it X. Now, we know that R to U, we are told that R to U is 80. R to U is from here to here, is 80. But we also know that this part is 15, which means that this, this, this distance that we see, W to X, must be 80 minus 15, which is 65. So far so good, this is 65, from W to X, from W to X, from W to X is 65. But we also know that this distance is 45. And if this is 65 and this is 45, then this must be 20. That's it. That's all we needed. That's it, we're done. Now we can figure out the area. We're not going to actually do the, we're not going to actually do the work, because these are called data sufficiency. We just have to establish whether or not we have sufficient data. And we do have sufficient data. We have sufficient data to figure out the area of this quadrilateral. First, the area of the triangle. Area of the triangle. First, the area of the triangle RSW. RSW is going to be one half base, which is 15, times the height, which is 60. Then we figure out the area of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle in the middle, which is Again, this part that we're doing right now, we will not do in the exam. I'm just showing you here just for the sake of showing you. The rectangle that we're talking about is WSTX. WSTX. And the area of this guy is simply 60 by 45. 60 by 45. And finally, the area of this triangle here, the triangle XTU. XTU is one half base, which we just found out is 20. And the height is same as this guy, which is 60. So we have all the information that we need, it's just a matter of doing it out, which we're not going to do. The point here is, we do have sufficient data to figure out the area of the rectangle, if we wanted to. A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we've established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. It will have to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, so if you're going to look at second statement, everything that we got out of the first statement, we have to erase it, everything, it's all, all of that is gone. All of this is gone. All of this is gone. That's it. That 60 can stay there because that comes right from the other, we drop the particular, that can stay there. That 45 is given to us. In the second statement, they tell us that, that T to U, T to U, they are told, that is equal to 20 root 10. T to U is 20 root 10.
20 to 10. Well, if we know if we know t to u, if we know this guy t to u, if we know this guy t to u, and we know this is 60, we can figure out x to u. Let's call it let's call it uh, let's call this distance d. We can very easily figure out the distance d by simple application of Pythagorean theorem. And once we have the distance d, we can subtract that distance from. Well, that's it. We have a distance d. We can figure out the area of this triangle. We can figure out the area of the triangle. We have enough information there. We have plenty of information there. We can figure out the d. d squared. We know d squared is going to be 20 root 10 squared, which is the hypotenuse squared, minus 60 squared. That's it. Once we have the d, we can figure out the rest. The second statement by itself is also enough. The answer to this problem is d. The second statement is also enough. As far as the problem is concerned, we are done. We're just going to finish it up just for learning purposes. Okay? We don't have to do it. This is not something we'll do in the real exam. We're just going to finish it up. So 20 squared is just 410 squared square root of square of 10 square square root of square of the 10 square is uh, square of square root of 10 is 10. So that's 4000 minus 3600, which is our d. Hence it is 4000 minus 36, which is 400. Which is 400, which is our d squared, and therefore d is 20. This d that area is 20, which is exactly, which is exactly, I believe, we found in the first statement. Yes, we found that u to x was 20, if you recall. You see, the reason the reason I did all this work actually is what to one more time to convince you to show you that the two statements they were contradict each other. If 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 the first statement told us that u to x was 20, the second statement better give us the same answer. And once we have that distance, we can figure out the area of this triangle, just like before. It's going to be one half uh, base, which is 20 times the height, or, uh, which is 60. And same as before, same procedure as before, nothing has changed, and therefore it's enough. Let's move on to the next one, number 146. Number 146. In number 146, we are told that the average of six number, the average we are told of six numbers equals 75. The question is, how many are equal to 75? We have we have a group of six numbers we are told, and in this sequence of six numbers we are told are this six, this six numbers happen to be such that their average turns out to be 75. The question is, how many of these six numbers are actually equal to 75? Let's, let's see what they tell us in the first statement. In the first statement, they tell us that none of the none of the six are less than 75. Oh, well, what do you know? And none of the six we are told are less than 75. Well, well, if if none is less than 75 then then none can be none can be more than 75 if there is if there is none that is less than 75 then none can be less than 75 and if none can be less than uh, none, none can be more than 75 if none is less than 75 then none can be more than 75 which means which implies they must they must hold 75. They would all have to. They would all have to be 75. That's the only way it is possible. That is the only way it is possible. And if you like, and if you like, you can make up a simple example. You can make up a simple example to convince yourself. Very simple example. Instead of instead of six numbers, instead of six numbers, let's say let's say only four numbers. And instead of average being 75, let's pretend that the average is 10. So I have I have four numbers here. I have four numbers. And their average is 10. And the four numbers are like this, you see? 10, 10, 10, and 10. Now, if one of these four numbers, if one of these four numbers happens to be less than 65, if one of them happens to be less than six, uh, less than 10 rather, not 75 is what I meant to say. If one of them happens to be out, out of these out of this example, four, we have four numbers, their average happens to be 10. Right here is the scenario, average of these four numbers, of course, is going to be 10. But if it, if it turns out that one of these four numbers is less than 10, 
then at least one would have to be more than 10. Maybe it's like this, maybe we have two tens, and then since this is nine, this is, this, is worth, this is one less than the average that we want. We want the average of these four numbers to be 10, and since this is nine, this is one less than the average, then this guy would have to be one more to compensate for the fact that this guy is one less than the average. This guy would have to be 11. One more time. As long, in a group of numbers, it doesn't matter whether you have four numbers or, or six million or 60 million numbers, if you have a group of numbers, and, if, and we know their average, as long as at least one number is less than the average, at least as long as at least one number is less than the average in the group, then at least one would have to be more than average. It would have to be to compensate for the fact that one is less. At least one would have to be more than uh, uh, more than average. It is also possible that that all the others might be more than average. I'll show you. For example, we may have a situation like this. We may have a situation like this. This is we still have ten, and then maybe this guy is ten and a half, and maybe this guy is ten and a half. And this half, this half that we see, and this half that we see there, will make up for the fact that this 9 is one less than 10 that we need it to be. Or another possibility is that they are all more than, uh, more than 10. They are all more than, uh, more than average. For example, they can all be, they can, all three of them could be 10 and third, 10 and third, and 10 and third. There you go, there, there are some, it's going to be the, the 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third is going to be 1, which is going to make up for the fact that this guy is one less than what we need to be. So it is possible, it is possible that you may have a group of six million numbers and as long as at least one is less than the average of that group, then it is quite possible that all the others in the group might be more than the average. Why not? Why not? Of course. For example, you may have ten tens or you may have a group of ten numbers that their average is ten and out of those 10 numbers, one of them happens to be 9. If one of them happens to be 9, then it is quite possible that all the others are 10.1. Actually, 10.1 won't do it. 10.1 will only add up to 0.9. It is possible, you see, we, we're going to make up an example here. There are, there are 10 numbers. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Here are 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. These 10 numbers, if you want their average to be 10, well, this guy is one less than the average. So it is possible that just because one, one number is less than the average, it is quite possible that all the others are more than 10. And in this scenario, because we have to make up one, that one has to be made up by all the others, the nine of them, equally, let's say. So maybe this is 10 and 1, 9, 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 10 and 1, 9, 10 and 1, 9, 10 and 1, 9, 1, 9, and 1, 9. The nine one nines will add up to one to make up for that extra one that for, to make up for that one that we are showed in the first one. But anyway, you get the point. The point here is that point here is that we are told that we have that we have a six numbers and we are told that their average is seventy five. Well, if there are six numbers and if their average is seventy five, and we are told and we are told that none of them are less than seventy five. Well, if none of them is less than seventy five, then none can be more than seventy five. If none of them is more less than seventy five then there can be none that is more than 75. And if none is more than 75 and none is less than 75, that means they are all 75. The question was, can we answer this question? The question was, how many of them are equal to 75? Can we answer that question? The answer is yes, of course we can answer the question. The answer to that question is, they are all 75. Statement 1 does the job quite nicely. A, D, B, C, E. Statement 1 does the job quite nicely. Now that we established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now that the answer cannot be B, C, or E. Let's look at the second statement. In the second statement, they tell us that none of these number is, none of this number is, none of these numbers are greater than 75. Well, well, if none is, none is greater than 75, if none is, none is greater than 75, then none can be, then none can be less than 75. They are all 75. Same exact logic would apply, exact same logic would apply except in the reverse direction. If you have a group of numbers, if you have a group of numbers and their average happens to be now, you see I just said group of number, I did not say how many how many in the in the group. You may have a group of uh, six numbers or you may have a group of 60 million numbers. So if I have a group of 60 million numbers and if I tell you that, the, that their average is such and such and such, uh, and if, I don't even have to tell you the average. I'm telling you that I have a group of uh, 60 million numbers and None of this number happens to be, none of them happens to be greater than the average. 
none of these numbers happens to be greater than average. Well, if none of the numbers are greater than the average, then there can be none that is less than average. They will all have to be equal to average. They will all have to be equal to average. Again, second statement does the job nicely. The question was, how many of them are equal to 75? The answer again is, they are all equal to 75. The answer is D. The answer is D. That's all it is. They're just playing around with you. They just want to make sure that you understand the concept of average. See, they are hoping that you will think that you need both of the statements. You, they are hoping that they would, that you will say that you need both statement one and statement two to be able to answer the question. And some people actually will end up picking answer choice C. But C is not the answer here. Each of these statements independently does the job quite nicely. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.